Hello my friends, it's the Game Boy Geek here, and today you're going to master essential mental math with an entertaining twist on a timeless classic game with beginner, intermediate, and advanced game grids. Play Smart Dice Math Tac Toe is for two to six players. It's for ages eight and up and published by Semper Smart Games. Today we'll be doing a rule school where I'll teach you how to set up and play the game so that you don't have to read the rule book yourself. Now I've placed timestamps below me right in the description of this video just in case you wanna to jump to a specific section of the rules. Let's get started. Math Tac Toe is a game for two to six players where you'll master essential math the fun way. Now there's three different levels of math, beginner, intermediate, and advanced, and all ages can play at the same time. Now you could play a two player game on a single card where you're trying to be the first player to get three in a row, horizontal, vertical, or diagonal. Now you'll be adding chips by using different orders of operations that's available on the card to place chips on specific numbers or removing them if another player is already there. Or you can play up to six players where each player plays on their own grid and you're trying to match the pattern on the pattern die first to win the game. But it's not as easy as it seems because even on the advanced cards, you're using different formulas like squares and cubes, square roots, all to try to get prime numbers. And those different levels of math allow all players to be competitive with each other. Now there's two different ways to play this. One is a two player game where each of you will be playing on the same card trying to get tic-tac-toe first three in a row. There's another way to play with two to six players. I'm gonna go over that version afterwards. So first let's talk about if you're playing a two player game and you're playing on a shared card. Now you'll notice that there's different colored cards here. Now these are double sided and the different colors represent different levels. For example, the green is beginner. This is generally for ages eight and up and it has addition and subtraction. The blue ones are intermediate, uses the timetables. For this grid, it's for you know multiple of 12. Now this is generally for ages 10 and up and it's in addition to doing the addition and subtraction, it's also doing multiplication and division. And the advanced one is generally for ages 12 and up and it's adding all sorts of different formulas that you can use that we'll talk about later. And all of these numbers are prime numbers. So based on the level of the two players playing, you'll select one single grid that you'll both be playing on. Each player will receive eight game chips of the color of their choice. You'll then take the uniquely numbered play smart dice and place them in the middle of the table where everyone can reach them. And any components that I have not mentioned are not used in this game. Now in this version of the game, you're trying to be the first to get three of your chips in a row. It could be horizontal, vertical, or diagonal. And again, you're playing on a shared grid. And when you start the game, you wanna make sure the grid is empty, meaning no player's chips are on there. You're gonna give the four dice to the youngest player and they are going to roll them. The inside of the box lid doubles as a felt-lined dice rolling tray, which allows you to roll the dice without them falling off the table. Now, based on math operations allowed by the card, in this case, we're using just uh, addition and subtraction, you're gonna be using these. Now, you must use at least two of the numbers, but you can use more. So let's go over different ways that you could use these dice to try to place one of your chips on the game card. Now, each of these dice face can only be used once as well, but again, you have to use two of them at least. So you might say, hey, nine minus four is five, and you could that could be it. You're gonna place your chip here, be on five, then it'll be the next player's turn. They're gonna roll the dice, and then they're gonna try to place a chip. But as you can see, there's possibly a better one. Seven plus five is 12, they can go right in the middle instead, because you know, hey, the middle's great in tic-tac-toe, right? Or maybe you take seven plus five, which is 12, and then minus four, which is eight, and you could go there instead. So again, you could use any amount of these in any order of operations, but you have to use at least two dice and you cannot use any die more than once. Or maybe I'd use nine plus five is 14, plus four is 18, plus seven is 25, and I could do something like this. Or I could use, say, seven minus four is three. Nine minus five is four. I add that to this, so the three plus the four, and I get the seven, and I could put it here. So you could do, again, you have all flexibility, as long as you use at least two numbers, and no die more than once, you could do any order of operations using just these, addition and subtraction in this case. But again, you could do them in any order, in any order of operations to get the number that you want. But let's say it was our turn, and the other player had gone here on their previous turn. Now, if there's already a chip where you wanna go, let's say I have seven plus five, so we have 12, Instead of placing a chip, theirs is there, we will remove it, and that will end our turn. And again, anytime you end your turn, it goes to the next player. You just alternate turns. At the beginning of your turn, you take the four dice, you roll them, 
and you, you know, basically are trying to place or remove another player's chip. Let's give you one more example. 9 plus 5 is 14. 14 minus the subtraction of these two numbers. 7 minus 4 is 3. So the addition of these, 14, subtract these two, 3. 14 minus 3 is 11. So you can go here. So again, just to show you that you can, you can really mix it up any way you want. And again, you'll just keep alternating turns, rolling the dice, placing a chip or removing your opponents until someone has three in a row and they've won. Now let's say we were using the intermediate one. So now you're using multiplication and or division with all of these. Now let's say we have these numbers. Now you can just do something easy like, hey, five plus four is nine. You can do, again, you have to use at least two numbers, but there's some other ones that are pretty interesting, like seven minus four, which is three, multiplied by nine minus five, which is four, so three times four is 12. So we could put it like this, for example. Or we say seven minus four is three, we multiply that by five, and that's 15. And we can, you know, put it there, for example. How about this tricky one? Seven plus five, so we have 12. We divide it by four, which is three. Three times nine is 27, and we could go there. So again, that's just showing you the flexibility of this. Now on the advanced group, again, these are all prime numbers. The middle is any prime number over 20. So seven times nine, 63, minus four, 59. You can go there, for example. Now keep in mind, you have all these other operations as well. You could say seven squared, so that's 49. Then we're gonna subtract that by the square root of four, which is two. 49 minus two, 47, we can go there. Now the rules actually show a lot of these. Now you can, if you want to, have a piece of paper and pen if you want to do some of these more complicated ones. Like look at all of these here. It's like, oh, you're going to take my 9 minus 4. You're going to square it, and you're going to add to 7. Then you're going to uh, add 5 to that, you know? Or 7 squared, and you're going to subtract, first of all, 5 plus 4, which is 9. Then you're going to subtract the square root of 9. So you have lots of flexibility. And this one you're probably going to want some paper and pencil to do things with. Now we're going to go over the two to six player version of the game when you're playing on your own grid. So each player is going to select a grid of the difficulty level that's appropriate for them. You could be using the same color as other players or you could be using a different one depending on your abilities versus the other players that are playing. One player is also going to take this pattern die and roll it. This is going to be the pattern die that's going to show you how you win the game for this specific game. Now the object of this game is to match the pattern on your grid. The first person to do that wins, but so it might look just like this but this can be rotated. So you could also win like this. It doesn't matter which way this is rotated on your grid, as long as you do this pattern, any of the, the ways you can rota rotate it, and you're the first one to do it, you've won. Now the game is played much like the other version of this game, which if you did not watch that part of the video, go back and watch it, because that teaches you all the basic concepts on how to play the game. So what's gonna happen is one player is gonna roll this, the dice, and all players are going to use these four dice to place a chip on their own grid. Remember, everybody has just one grid, and you're working only on your own. That's how you play the two to six player version. Version. Well, I hope this helped you dive right into Math Tac Toe faster than you normally would if you had to read the rulebook yourself. Now, if you have further questions about the rules, I placed the link below me in the description of this video, and that's the best place to ask them since I'll be notified, but so will Semper Smart Games.